Okay, welcome back. So the next part we're going to talk about is this websites and internet marketing. So e-commerce we've talked before is transitioning is is this all the using information and communication technology to sell your products and services online. Um, for, in order to do that, you probably need some infrastructure, you need a website and you need to do marketing so that people will know that your products and services are being offered online. And websites is the most common and the most important things these days. And so designing a website is a key element. I'm not going to go into a full course on how to design websites. There's plenty of that information uh, on the internet. There is uh, plenty of YouTube tutorials and there are plenty of companies that can help you with that. But let's see why websites are important and what drives you know, a good website. Well, there are three elements. So something needs to be structurally firm, means that it should be workable, uh, errors should be reduced, or at least when they happen, they should be clear. Privacy, security, it should be, uh, the website should be responsive, should be quick. So that's what we call structural firmness. It, firmness is the website solidly built, does it work? The second one is functional convenience. Is the website easy to use? Can you navigate around the website easier? Uh, can you get feedback? Can you, uh, how is the ordering process? Can I pay which services? Can I track my order and so on? So the second part, functional convenience talks about, does the website offer the functions and the features that a customer expects? Uh, so does it function? What options do I have? How can I order? How can I interact with the website? The third one is rep representational delight. That means, does the website look nice? Does it feel professional? Does it convey the message that you want to convey as an organization? Think about the colors, the fonts, the images you use. Does it, is the layout consistent? Is there no clutter? So for me, and this is an older snapshot of our intranet of the university, that is something that is structurally firm, very functional, but limited representational delight. There is a lot of links there, buttons, uh, things that may or may not be relevant to me. So representational delight these days is key. Uh, and actually you need to somehow balance all these three elements. Uh, something that uh, where you have a very strong, well-functioning website, uh, technologically sound, um, but no representational delight is very utilitarian. Uh, it's just text, links, it functions and it clicks and it was essentially what the internet looked like uh, uh, you know, at the start. Uh, it was there, it worked, wasn't, look, didn't look very pretty, but it functioned and it functioned well and consistently. Um, on, if you go fully on the representational side, but your website doesn't really function, it's a lot of bells and whistles, it looks very, uh, appealing but of course when the website crashes there's bad links that representational delight doesn't mean that much anymore so somehow you need to find a balance between all these three elements and at the very least there is this what we call the minimal acceptable minimal acceptable level that you need to stay above for all three of them so if you look at this diagram you know you can go structural firms can be high to low Representational delight can be high to low, functional convenience. But whatever you do, you could be somewhere here, you could be closer here in that mix. But in any case, you should always stay above the zone of intolerance because when you drop below that line, uh, the other how no matter how well you design the other elements, how well you implement them, people will not accept it. So there is a there is a minimum demand for each of them that you don't want to compromise on when you're developing a website. And then there's the optimization uh, part of it. But for the minimum, you want to establish functional minimal requirements for all three elements, and then go into the optimization of where you want to put the focus. Um, now, something that is increasing because we are using more and more mobile phones is actually mobile using the advantage of mobile technology. In the beginning of this lecture, I talked about one of these trends, mobile technology. Now, you could sell products and services through internet pages, and that was already a possibility. 
um, now because we have mobile the mobile phones you can of course just offer your website and uh, use your website to uh, make it available on a mobile phone but because it's a mobile phone you can do more than just offering your website and your web shop you can make advantage of some of the features of a mobile phone um, to get to know your customer better, but to also use uh, some of that information, such as the location of the user, where the user is. Uh, you can think about, um, you know, the activities the user has done and so on. So that part we call specifically not only e-commerce, but mobile commerce and mobile marketing. So think about when you're walking around and a offer could be made on your phone based on your location. For example, the nearest McDonald's or, uh, hey, it's five o'clock, you're hungry, you know, these are some great restaurants nearby. Google Maps has that built in. So they use your location uh, to understand the user location and your profile to give you specific activities around you that you could go. So that is lo location burst, location based mobile commerce they are using it to persuade you um, to buy something to go to a restaurant or to use a product or services so your people are always looking advertisers to get to know the consumer better so that they can target their advertising to that specific location need to your uh, wishes and mobile phones allow them to better understand where you are what your needs might be and to target at specific times. Um, then there's also the, the um, you know, information you can go. So if you, for example, in a specific place, you're interested in a specific product, even within the store, uh, mobile technology can help you learn more about that product. They can um, uh, show you certain, uh, certain services that are being offered around you. Uh, if you ever been to a theme park like Disney or the Efteling and have used apps from them, uh, you will know that based on your location and the time of day, they can give you recommendations which ride to go to. So it is providing you with information to help you in your decision making process. Um, the risk here is that it can be lead to showrooming, essentially meaning that it it shows you the best and it shows you only the things that they want you to sh to see. Um, so if you're fully driven by this information on your mobile phone, uh, you essentially follow the direction that the company who's sending you that information wants you to follow. Uh, and of course, you can do products and sales uh, as you go with your mobile phone. Think about buying a ticket for a train, even if you're already traveling, um, you know, going to a movie theater. Here is a sam here's an example from last year when there was a national strike for public transport. And the movie theater near me was smart enough to send a ticket saying, hey, we know there's a strike, uh, probably means a day off for you. So we're gonna offer you a, you know, a discount to come to the movie theater. So that is using you know, that targeted information about understanding where somebody might be on that day because they know you'll probably be home and your home is near that movie theater. And uh, understands the, the, you know, using the context of the strike to combine all that information and making a specific offer. Um, that part also leads to something what we call viral marketing. And one of the best viral marketing ones I've seen is, is one of uh, KLM, again, uh, about a, a dog uh, that they used. And I'll show you that one. Yeah, ontzettend leuk. Personally, I think I'm going to be for the bedrijf. En hij kan ook echt iets wat niemand anders kan. Ons primaire doel is om gevonden voorwerpen zo snel mogelijk terug te brengen naar de eigenaar. We houden daarvoor een social media in de gaten en de crew die na elke vlucht het vliegtuig checkt. Ik vind het ook wel heel erg leuk dat we natuurlijk een uh, beetje hulp daarbij krijgen.
trainen op spierkracht, uithoudingsvermogen en uh, ja, socialiseren. Ja, en als je die reactie ziet, dan is dat eigenlijk wel heel mooi. Hij komt regelmatig langs, en, uh, maar ja, ik moet ook eerlijk bekennen, ik uh, verwend hem ook wel. Okay, so that was a um, you know an advertising from KLM, and uh, they they also said that that dog doesn't really that's not really how Lost and Found works. But what happened is that they start sharing that video, and people loved it so much they start sharing it again. So that process uh, we call that uh, uh, viral marketing. Uh, so essentially, uh, I know it's a poor term to use these days but it means that uh, the message that uh, is going around very quickly. So why, what does it have to do with mobile and e-commerce? Essentially, that kind of marketing is very nowadays tied into e-commerce. You're not leaning purely on market, pure marketing by reaching a lot of customers. You're relying on your networks to spread that message. As we talked about in chapter five, um, social media specifically allows you to establish a connection. So that connection can be used to sell your products and services, but those connections can also be used to share messages about your products and services. And once people have a good experience, uh, you can give them these kinds of contents through mobile technology, through the internet, to help them broadcast that message. And those people will be able to connect to your products and services again, uh, because it's easily accessible. So nowadays, this marketing, e-commerce, social media, all these things are becoming more and more integrated and connected. Uh, and that's essentially here. So let's continue to the last part of this lecture. And that specifically goes a little bit deeper into this mobile commerce and how that enables new kinds of services and products.